was easy. Hi, I saw a really funny paper that was posted online in theoretical computer science. So what I would thought would be funny would be to go look at the paper and to give my reactions to it. So the paper name is Lower Bounds for Probabilistic Polynomial Time. So let's take a look at this. So the abstract says that we will fill a gap in existing complexity theory by introducing the class of probabilistic polynomial time computations. That is computations that you know, <laughs> that you know probably terminate in polynomial time as far as we know. We apply this class to show that algorithms for NP complete problems probably don't run in polynomial time. So this is going to be quite uh, amusing at least. The introduction, the motivation behind the new complexity class of probabilistic polynomial time, PPT, can best be described by recounting the conversation that led to its discovery. The second author was talking about his register of blah, 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 blah which might be considered inefficient. This led the first author to ask whether it was polynomial time, to which the pro only possible answer under the circumstances was probably. <laughs> this is something that I do with my students a lot of the time. I tell them, what is the answer to a yes-no question that would make their instructor the most angry? And the answer is probably or maybe one of the two. So uh, uh, this is quite funny. This led the, to the question of which complexity class the algorithm fell into, but there was no known class of uh, for algorithms that are probably polynomial time and after of a period of intense research and discovery, and there's a little footnote here that says, by other researchers on unrelated topics, <laughs> the paper was born. That, that's, that's hilarious. Okay, so the first definition, uh, an algorithm A probably runs in, pol in time T of N if and only if the algorithm's designer is pretty sure it runs in deterministic time T of N, where pretty sure means with reasonably high degree of certainty. Nine tenths sure, or at least three quarters. <laughs> this is actually funny for several reasons. One of the re main reasons is that prob the actual class that this is based on, probabilistic polynomial time, involves a certain constant that the program will stop within a polynomial number of steps after making some number of guesses. And the percentage of the time that it gets the answer correct is at least a certain number. And that's usually some number that is defined at least one half because if it's one half or lower, it can just guess yes or no without having to do anything. So the three quarters here is actually one of the constants that's used sometimes, sometimes it's two thirds, but effectively you can make it any constant between one half and one if you wanted to. It's funny that they're actually just picking an arbitrary constant here because that's what's actually done. They have an algorithm performance uh, picture right here an empirical proof that an algorithm is in PPT, this looks like a polynomial to me. And that's something that a lot of people fall into, that they see a certain trajectory of a graph, and therefore it must behave like this for all eternity. And you can't necessarily guarantee that. We define probabilistic polynomial time to be the class of languages that have an algorithm that probably runs in time P of N for some polynomial P and probably in probabilistic polynomial time the, to be the class of languages that probably have an algorithm that runs in polynomial time. That's, that's wonderful. We formalized the preceding definition by constructing an algorithm A that takes in a generating algorithm computing some language L and enumerates all possible Turing machines, effectively algorithms, looking for one that generates the same language in the original PPT, it looks like PowerPoint to me. A language L is generated by the machine is in the triple PT if it runs, probably runs in finite time on the input. And the results, results, show that the two sets of languages are the same. So the two P's is a subset of the three P's. And then for the three P's one, that means that there is some algorithm that searches for a double PT algorithm that probably terminates yielding an output algorithm and then they go into more details about that. Uh, but there's a comment here that says that this probably adds only an admittedly large fixed constant to the running time, uh, which, is, which is great. Uh, this allows us to prove the following theorem, which is our primary result, that NP is not contained within PPT. And it's widely agreed among researchers that SAT, for instance, probably does not have a polytime algorithm, that SAT is not in triple PT, and then therefore is not in double PT by the preceding lemma, which is definitely shown to be true. This is what is sometimes called proof by intimidation, that there are these really experienced researchers that have worked for so long on this particular problem that 
Therefore, since they couldn't solve it, therefore there is no polynomial time algorithm for them, which is obviously not the case. We consider this theorem to be, provide a formal basis for claiming a priori that any algorithm for set will probably not run in polynomial time. A similar line of reasoning effect demonstrates that set is in probabilistic exponential time, which we consider to be a major step forward in resolving the fundamental lower bound questions involving NP problems. So one of the actual things that is done in complexity theory is we have a certain problem that we want to solve and we have an upper bound for how fast an algorithm can be, but we also want to know what is a lower bound for how long must a correct algorithm possibly take at least in order to solve the problem. And currently we're at, I think, like linear lower bounds or, or polynomial lower bounds for NP complete problems, and that's not enough. If we can show that we can get to beyond polynomial, then that will show that P is not equal to NP, but we're not even close to that. That's a, a legitimate technique, it's just that there's a lot of roadblocks in going that route, because you have to show that any possible algorithm cannot possibly work. Whereas if we just show one algorithm that works, then we can analyze its runtime in the worst case. But it could be that there's a faster one, in which case it could drop to polynomial time. But if we show that the lower bound is beyond polynomial time, then we don't need to investigate whether there is a poly time algorithm after that. So the conclusion says that by showing that any algorithm for an NP complete problem probably doesn't run in poly time, we have, pro we have probably made a major step forward in the field of complexity theory lower bounds. We believe that double P is a promising area for future study, including classifying exactly which problems do or don't probably have efficient solutions. Furthermore, these developments are a great boon to graduate students and algorithms courses. Formerly, when asked to provide analysis of an algorithm's performance, students often had to perform very sophisticated and difficult calculations. Probabilistic analysis provides a very simple and natural way to spe exactly specify the complexity class of algorithms where numerical analysis is unwieldy by simply specifying what time bound the algorithm probably runs in. And thus concludes a really humorous paper in complexity theory. So hopefully that was interesting. Leave thoughts about this funny paper in the comments down below. As always, please like the video and subscribe to the channel. It really helps us out. There are many other links in the video description if you want to support the channel further. And as always, thanks for watching and I'll see you next time. That was easy. That was easy. That was easy.